Hello! My name is Pei and today I'm going to show you how I do my entry level TOAs as a beginner with low combat stats. Being a new runescape player you're often questioning yourself things like is my magic level high enough for this content, how many quests do I have to complete in order to unlock this other quest, do I have enough agility to jump over this f***ing rock, why am I even playing this game? The thing is, yeah, for some of the endgame content you actually need a little bit of stats but luckily for us TOA isn't one of them and it's extremely fun to do once you get a group of it. It's a cool endgame thing and you actually feel like you're doing something even if you're just a small toad in a swamp full of alligators. The coolest thing about it is you actually have a chance to get a purple chest and in it one of the best melee weapons in the game, Fang. As you can see here, my stats are pretty average. Let's say this is a medium level account and we're kind of in the middle of being able to do everything and nothing, but this is more than enough for TOA. While not being a requirement, I would highly suggest to get on the Dragon Defender grind because this thing is a beast. Just look at all the stats it provides. Go check out some of the guides on YouTube and you're good to go. The only hard requirement for TOA is a quest called Beneath the Cursed Sands and what it does is it actually unlocks the raid area and provides you with a really strong weapon you're going to use in the raid called Cursed Partisan. This thing shreds Kelphites and Scarabites and can deal triple damage to them. As far as gear goes, we're pretty much limited because of our stats but you need to have switches for all 3 combat styles. It also depends on how much GP you currently have but I'm going to show you a baseline and you can upgrade from that. These are the pieces of gear I camped, meaning these are never switched. We have our Nezi Helm, Glory Amulet, Dragon Defender, Combat Bracelet and Dragon Boots. From Mate Switch, I used Iben Staff, Blood Park Chest and Legs and Major Arena 1 Cape. Because of its max hit, Iben Staff is probably the best staff you can wear up until you unlock Tridents. For Range Switch, we have a Dragon Crossbow with Enchanted Ruby Bolts, Eva's Accumulator and Blessed Dragon High Chest and Legs. Enchanted Ruby Bolts can hit up to 100 damage which is really helpful for some of the bosses and Blessed Dragon High provides bonus prayer in comparison to regular black dragon hide. For melee switch I used an abyssal dagger, fighter torso, fire cape and obsidian legs. If you have the requirements and have completed the barbarian minigames you should use zemi hasta instead of dagger because it's more accurate and has a prayer bonus. Monsters in TOA are really weak to stab so take that into consideration. As you can see the total value of my gear is around 8 mil which is really not that much. If you're really low on GP you could throw out the dagger and dragon crossy and replace them with rune crossy and the dragon sword or even leaf bladed sword. This will reduce your gear value to around 2.8 mil. But keep in mind that deaths in TOA are safe, so if you have extra GP laying around just use it. It will make for much faster kills and overall better experience. TOA difficulty is determined by the amount of invocations you take. They are basically handicaps and can often provide additional mechanics to bosses and gameplay in general. Also higher invocation level means better chances of getting a purple chest and within it a better piece of gear. Obviously you can do an entry level 0 TOA but with it you're not eligible to get any good pieces of gear so we're gonna start with level 50 invo immediately. It's almost the same as level 0 so don't worry much about it. These are the invocations that I took and I'm just gonna briefly explain what each of them do. So of run. Imagine you're 30 minutes in and all of a sudden you die. Softcore will give you 3 additional chances to recoil yourself and get on with the raid. Lively larvae. It does nothing. Don't worry about it. Blowing mud. It does nothing as well. Not just head. Also nothing. Finally we have blood thinners. Nothing. So now that we covered all the invocations, there are 2 plugins which I would advise you to get if you're using the rune light client. First one being the logout timer. If your brain is lagging like mine, this is a plugin which basically shows you how much time you have until you're logged off the server. Second one is a TOA plugin. This one will show you solutions to the raid puzzles. Just to give you a little bit of encouragement, here's a showreel of me dying on every single boss. But that's ok, you're expected to die a lot in this game, it's the only way you learn and adapt to certain encounters. I mean who cares, you're not losing anything, there isn't a statistic or an ill system in place, just have fun, that's all there is to it. Now before we go in, let's make sure we have all of our switches in place and our inventory is fine to withhold the whole run. You also wanna bring a cursed partisan, dragon dagger and adamant darts alongside your standard gear. If you have an abyssal dagger, then dragon dagger is not necessary. I'm going to bring it just to showcase its use but you don't really need it, especially if you're still learning the raid. As far as the supplies go, I'm bringing 3 super restores, 1 dose of ranging pot and 1 dose of combat pot. Rest of my inventory consists of regular food. If you're just starting out, it might be wise to bring some brews instead of regular food just so you can survive longer and get a feel for the raid. But before we do anything, grab your best pickaxe, go inside the raid and enter the pet of head room. Inside, place the pickaxe of your choice there, you're going to need it for the puzzle. The better the pickaxe, the the faster you'll solve the puzzle. Ok, now that that's done, you should pre-put an antidote or antidote plus plus or whichever one you have. This is extremely helpful and will render you immune to poison for the first two encounters. 
We're starting off with the pet of Grundy's room. Equip your mage gear and walk through the gates. Drop one item of your choice on the ground and pick up the water container. I'm not gonna go in depth about puzzles, but basically you need to fill in the water container while not taking damage. If you fill in the container and don't take any damage on your way back, you will heal the palm tree for 100 HP. If you take damage while holding the filled in water container, I guess your character kind of spills some of the water and then you'll heal the tree for less, meaning you'll have to do more runs. Taking damage also reduces your defense and agility stats, but that's why we bring a super restore pot. These crocs are weak to magic and they drink that sweet palm nectar, just kill them. There are some guides which teach you how to do a tick perfect or whatever kind of run of this puzzle, so if you're up for that, know that it's out there. Once the tree is happy, pick up your item and go into the boss room. Heal up, restore your stats and equip your ranged gear. Use your ranged potion and go in. As you can see, my enchanted ruby bolts have procced immediately, which took a big chunk of Croc's HP right at the start. Have your ranged damage prayer up constantly and watch out for what the boss is about to throw at you. z has two normal attacks, which you need to pray against accordingly. Magic. And range. Once you get his HP down to a certain threshold, he will spit goo all over the place and you'll need to take cover behind one of the tree rocks which spawn on random locations. Stepping into a pool of acid will damage you and if you don't have an anti-poison will also poison you. Here you need to push this jug of water into the rock so it cleans out the area of acid. Then just stand behind the rock and wait for the roar to finish. He will occasionally spawn waves which you need to avoid. They're pretty easy to bypass and no, you cannot surf on them. He also has the ability to spawn these little red blobs of blood. You can just run away from those until they decay. Like almost every other boss in RuneScape, Croc will go berserk when he's pretty close to being dead. Once Croc is down, we're moving into the next room where we'll fight against Kefri. There are a couple of different puzzles here, but if you're a solo, you only need to complete two of them instead of the regular four before you can move on to the last puzzle. This one is pretty self-explanatory, just click on the obelisk until they light up. You need to light up the obelisk in certain order and that's about it. For this puzzle, click on the stone wall right beside it and it will show you a number. Open up your TOA plugin and there's a solution to every single number in there. Walk on the correct tiles and that's it. Jump over and move on to the last puzzle which is literally memory. Equip your melee gear but instead of the dagger you wanna use your curious partisan here because it has a chance to do triple damage on this boss only. Also as you can see I have these two tiles marked in the east corner of the room. Mark them. This is where we'll stand in the first phase of the fight. Begin the challenge and use your combat pot. Run next to the tile and start hitting the boss. For the full duration of this fight, you wanna use your strength prayer. Kefri will constantly throw these little fireballs which explode upon impact. So one at a time and move a tile whenever they're about to land. Once he stops attacking like so, move to the first marked tile and wait for the special attack to happen. Move towards the second marked tile and start attacking him again. He also has the ability to throw a lot of bombs on the ground. Just stay away from them and you're fine. Once you kill him the first time, you want to immediately start praying against ranged. You're gonna pray ranged for the rest of this encounter. Upon first death, he will spawn a scarab which you can just melee. They're pretty easy to kill. You're also going to have to deal with these weird kamikaze scarabs. Just move away from them. Fully ignore this little swarm of bees. Bait another pile of goo on the marked tile and then move all the way towards south. Once you kill him another time, he will again spawn the melee scarab which will be stuck between the piles of goo. Just ignore him. He will also spawn a major which you need to get rid of quickly. If he manages to charge his attack, he can do a lot of unnecessary damage. Kill the major and avoid the little kamikaze scarabs again. Make sure to not get stuck between piles of goo, otherwise you're going to have a hard time navigating through the area. Now the rest of the fight will be a simple tank and spank between you and Kefri. Once you clear two rooms, a helpful spirit will appear and you'll be able to claim some supplies which will help you an awful lot throughout the raid. Usually you wanna take a supply which has salts. Salts are incredibly good because they boost all of your combat stats by 19. This is a tremendous increase in damage, defense and everything else. The faster you kill your target, the less supplies you're gonna waste. Yellow pots are cerebrus, pink pots are super restorable. Pot, white pots or ambrosia will heal you instantly to max HP and restore all of your prayer points. They are basically extra lives which will come in handy for the last fight but not now. Silk restores your HP over time and scarabs restore your prayer over time. Blue pots or adrenaline reduces the cost of your special attacks and restores them faster. This is useful for wardens later on. Now that we covered all the different supplies, we're gonna take the middle one. Chaos. We're gonna open up our supplies and take some of them out. You wanna take out one salt and just couple of heals and restores. We need a few empty slots for the next puzzle. Next, we're going to go into the pet of head puzzle room. In here, you wanna take the pickaxe that you previously stashed and enter the room. There's not much to show here. There are two statues and one of them is shooting a laser beam. You need to pick up mirrors and light them so the laser touches the other statue. Once that's done, you will be able to mine the obelisk in the middle. Do this a couple of times and you're done. 
As you can see, I had to write a tile in order to not forget to return the pickaxe back to its place. Now we're gonna fight Aka. For this encounter, you're always starting off with your mage switch. When you're ready, take one bite of her salt and enter the arena. Aka will fight you with all 3 combat styles and will also pray against 2 combat styles himself. You need to watch what he's praying against in order to know how you're going to attack him. This will also indicate how you need to protect against him. Now this is the part where you'll need to do a little bit of memorizing. If Aka is praying against melee and ranged, that means you can only attack him with magic. But it also means he's attacking with melee, so you need to protect against melee. The way you can tell which type of attack he's using is by taking a look at his prayer icon. You'll notice that whichever icon is on top of the other, that's the style he's going to use. This will become more apparent the more you get into it. Aka switch styles again, and as you can see he's praying against ranged and magic, but since ranged prayer is on top of the magic prayer, he's attacking with ranged. You need to switch to melee and protect against ranged. This was bad timing because he's about to do one of his abilities, so sometimes he'll disappear and you'll need to remember the last style. Once Aka disappears, move to the middle of the arena and you'll notice the 4 different icons. These icons will light up in a random order and it's basically just a game of Simon Says. Here we got lightning, skull, fire, skull. So we're going to move in that order. Aka reappears and since we remember his last style, we switch to melee and prayed against ranged. At a certain period, Aka will become invincible and you'll need to kill one of his illusions so you can damage him again. Always stand in the area where you killed the last illusion, otherwise you won't be able to attack him. Aka swap his styles again. This is the third and the last style he has. As you can see, the mage prayer is on top of the melee one so he's attacking with magic. We need to pray against magic and equip our ranged gear. Kill the illusions whenever they spawn. You can shoot them while playing the Simon Says game as well. Once again, Always stand in the area where you kill the last illusion so you can damage Aka. That's it, rinse and repeat. Once you kill him, he will respawn and for this last phase I advise you to use melee and just use your special attack on him. There will be a lot of little whirlwinds all over the place so you'll need to avoid that as well or just heal up if you get damaged a lot. I know that this seems complicated at first, especially if you're a new player. Trust me, it was complicated to me as well. I still get catched off guard from time to time but once you kill him a few times it will become trivial like everything else in this game. Let's move on to the next room which is the monkey puzzle room. In this room, you're basically fighting off different waves of monkeys. They all use different styles and all of them are weak to certain styles as well. You also need to fix the broken pillars with a hammer and drop a potion into a sewer when indicated. Let me show you what you're dealing with. Take out some of your raid supplies, pick up a hammer and a potion from the box. Equip your mage gear since Bloodbark is the tankiest of them all. You're basically going to switch your weapon only, including adamant darts. In here, you mostly want to pray melee and sometimes range depending on how many ranged monsters there are in your wave. You have red monkeys which attack with melee and are weak to magic. Next you have blue monkeys, they attack with magic and are weak to ranged. And then you also have green monkeys which attack with ranged and are weak to melee. This will be our palette for the entirety of RuneScape. So once again, red equals melee, blue equals magic and green equals ranged. Melee is weak to magic. Magic is weak to ranged and ranged is weak to melee. Imagine you're playing Pokemon for 40 year old dads. Once you notice the skull icon next to the pillars, click on it to repair it, otherwise you'll take a lot of damage. Once you notice the skull icon over the grilled floor, drop a potion on it, otherwise you'll also take a lot of damage. But that's not all of course, there are a couple of more different monkeys, one of them being the volatile monkey. You don't have to kill that one, just let him get near you and he will explode. This is useful for taking out groups of stacked monsters. There's also the shaman monkey, you wanna focus that one first because he spawns a lot of little melee monkeys. And lastly, we have the cursed monkey that leaves a trail of venom as he walks by. You wanna kill that one ASAP and if possible, try to avoid standing in venom. You can also bring a dose of anti-venom potion if you think that's a problem. Oh, and yeah, I almost forgot, use your darts if there are a shit ton of little blue monkeys. Now, there's no easy solution to this puzzle, so you just have to outlast the monkeys. How hard can it be? Well, you can always go inside the raid and try this puzzle a few times before you do an actual raid. It's always an option since you don't lose anything. Once again, dying inside TOA is a safe death and you won't lose a single thing. Phew, that was easy. Let's move on to the boss fight. Equip your melee gear, crush one salt and step into the arena. You wanna pray melee for the duration of this fight, obviously pray strength as well. Now, Baba is pretty much simple, he will occasionally spawn shockwaves which you need to move away from. He will also spawn two rocks and you'll need to move to one of the rocks before he throws a bigger rock right at you. If you're not standing near a rock, it will not soak any damage and you will take up to around 40 HP just from that. Baba will spawn two monkeys two times during the fight. Nothing much to say here other than you need to get rid of them ASAP. I always save my spec just for these guys. Watch out for the rock throw. When you deal enough damage, Baba will jump to the top of the arena, push you all the way down and throw five boulders. You. you need to equip your range gear and shoot the boulder which looks a little bit different than the others. If your range level is low, you also need to turn on your range damage prayer so you can one hit the boulder. If you don't do that, this might happen to you as well. 
Switch your gear back to melee, pray against melee and repeat all of the above. Ok, so we killed another two bosses which means our helpful spirit is there once again to give us aid in our main boss fight. Now if you still have souls I'd advise that you take the life supplies because you've reached this far. You really just want to make sure that you're going to survive and finish off the raid. Of course, once you get more comfortable with the raid you're going to start taking chaos and power more often. Take out some of the supplies, crush assault if you don't have one active already and equip whichever gear you deal the most damage with. Stand on each side of the pillar and soak the damage while hitting the pillar. You'll notice that there's a red circle bar beneath both of the wardens. Once the opposite circle fills, you can move out and stop soaking damage. Avoid the red and yellow pillars that drop from the sky and don't worry about these balls. You can't pray against them. Heal up whenever you can. Once the pillar is down, a warden will awake and you're gonna equip your mage gear and start hitting him. He has two attacks. Ranged the magic. Pillar will spawn lights on the ground which follow a circular motion. All you have to do is not stand on them and you're good. There will be a couple of more attacks coming out of the pillar but you just need to avoid them, nothing else. Warden will occasionally shoot a blue, white or a red projectile at you. You wanna pray mage against blue, ranged against white and melee against red projectile. When he's fully charged up, you need to equip your melee gear and start hitting the heart. If you don't have an abyssal dagger, you wanna pull out your dragon dagger and start specking the heart. This is where adrenaline comes in handy as you can spam your special all the way. Once the warden is up, you wanna equip your range gear and repeat all the things you did before. That's it, just swap between magic and range phases and you're good to go. When warden is dead, heal up, restore your prayer and equip your range gear. You're always going to fight the last boss with your range setup. The last warden will throw shockwaves at you in a specific order. The order will always be the same and you're gonna stand on the third tile, first tile, then second tile. Rinse and repeat. Third tile, first tile, second tile. At a certain HP threshold, he will spawn these little red skulls which have 1 HP and can only be meleeed. Just sweep out your melee weapon and finish them off. At almost half HP, Warden will spawn the croc spirit which will shoot his regular 2 projectiles at you, ranged and magic one. You need to pray correctly against this. At around third of his HP, Warden will spawn the spirit of Baba and rocks will fall from the sky. You just need to avoid them. When the Warden is almost dead, he will go into frenzy mode. Now this is where things get a little crazy, but just keep your focus and watch the shadows on the ground. Don't step into them. Use your silk and scarab to have a continuous HP and prayer restore. Nami! Keep in mind that you have 4 stacks of white ambrosia potions which will fully heal your HP. As you can see, I took a lot of damage here, but I didn't panic and just used the white potion and my HP was full again. And there you go, we finish off the last boss of the raid. Well, hopefully you give this raid a go, because it's a fun raid and most importantly, it's really accessible to new players with low combat stats just like myself. Just do a run here and there, don't let it be a chore and you'll have a good time, I'm sure of it. Thank you for watching and have a good one.